Good morning. Thank you for joining. I'm Kendra Griffin, National Account Director with Wood Floor Business, and we are here today with our friends Avidas and Barton with LED Coating Solutions by Archetypal. And we are going to be going through custom color matching using LED cured oils. With that, I just want to mention if you have any questions throughout uh, today's demo, please put them in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen and we will circle back to them at the end. And I will turn it over to you guys. Hi guys, I'm Avidas. Hello, Vartan. Um, yeah, we're gonna have some fun today. We gonna show you some colors from our color set. <clears throat> How can we mix colors and make custom colors to match existing colors and also how can we do the repairs of these colors? A little bit about that. But before we get into that, I think there was a, there, there was a video about previous webinar we did about color theory. We make sure that you see that because that will help you to understand more about the color theory, how this works with the matching colors. So we will make sure that the end will send you those links. But uh, other than that, first, quickly, I want to talk to you about LED coating solutions, what it is. Basically, we're using oxidative kind of oils, but there is a photo initiators inside. It cures it immediately. So it enables you to do a layer colors. That's what really help us. And also, of course, for the project, you could get the project going much faster. But... Before we get into the colors, I want to show a simple way how this product works because we get a lot of questions that how much product you put it on, how much you wipe it off. And before we get into you know, the details, I want to show you that how this is done. And then if it's a color oil, this is the same way done. So uh, we're going to start from pure. Yeah, we're going to start from pure. What I want to do, I want to put a tape. This is a walnut. Send it 120. Uh, a lot of times I would I would also water pop this to get better absorption of a color. Um, using my gloves, I don't want to get messy here. And uh, so when you applicate an oil, could be on the floors on a job site, or if it's gonna be on the cabinet door or uh, panels. Basically, it's almost the same routine. You applicate the burnish, the oil until it cannot absorb anymore. And then you wipe the excess off. And <clears throat> when you wipe the excess off, you need kind of spread rage. So you're going to have a white pad um, to basically wipe it off with it. But if you have too much oil and you might use a rag or something to clean it up and then go with the white, white pad to make it give your spread rate because white white pad could leave so much oil, that's what you need. If you clean totally with the rack, then you don't have any oil at all. So you applicate with red, you wipe it off with white. Okay, so I'm gonna go put the vesting oil. This is a semi-gloss oil. I wanna just put it on a little bit. I know some of you guys know all this, but uh, it's good to go one more time because there's always a question. So basically I just put some oil. <clears throat> if this was a large area, I could have rolled it. And I start burnishing. See, I'm burnishing, making sure that oil gets absorbed. See how it's absorbing it. Now, how much you need to have here, you wanna really understand that is this enough or not? Basically, if I do the same thing here, it will start making that wet. When I when I burnish, and in a larger area, you would use a bigger buffer. If it's a table, you know, you use the same way I'm just doing it right now. During burnishing, I had a lot of oil, basically 90% of it absorbed, but I'm seeing these light circular lines. I don't know if you see it there, okay? So if you could see that light circular lines, very light. Keep it around the mm -hmm. Keep it on the round so they will see. Yeah. 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 So yeah. 
So if you see those light lines, that means you have enough oil. Well, let's say if I was going to have a uh, this type of situation, and I'm burnishing it, I see something like that. That means I don't have enough oil. So I don't want it to do a, a dry. I'm going to ruin this side. I want to do it, Barton. I know you want it for something else, but I want to show that people sometimes they will stretch the oil and they will they will get this effect. See? It looks similar, right? It looks similar, but there is not enough oil. So that's why don't stretch the oil. Then you're not sealing that. And also you're not going to get a consistent color. If you are burnishing, and you're seeing these light circles, light circles, see, they there. That's what I know I have enough oil, but I don't want more than that. That's that's perfect. So now I, uh, I, I wanted to get the rid of those. So I go with the white pad after that. So once I start hitting with the white pad, those little lines, they will come off, you see? Even I'm doing circular motion, those lines are gone, okay? Because this is much softer, this is much coarser, this leaves it and this wipes it off. Basically, when those lines are gone, and but they are not gone like this, see? If I wipe it, you could see even a shin different. That means I don't have anything there. I don't want that. I want the white pad to do my circular motion and get the rid of it. If you do the white pad and you get little bit, very small lines, then on the side, you can use Orec buffer. I want to show that buffer to you. Kind of, it's a, it vibrates it's, and, and, it, and it does a small circles, you know. Okay. okay, so this way it will get the rid of that and a factory line after your buffing pads. You have a brush that goes this way and takes, a, takes it away those little fine lines. So those fine, fine lines are important so I know how much oil I have. Okay, so now after I burnished it, I am going to, uh, I'm going to dry this. So I will wear a glasses because if it's if you're using a bigger light, that's a lot more a uh, uh, lot more light is gonna uh, expose. I will show you the big light for a second too. And this this battery light is only for sample making. I don't want you to use this light for drying or curing. But I just want to show you the bigger light. But I'm going to dry with this today. So the way you dry. You know, you stand like two, three inches up, up from the, from the oil, and you just go straight and back, straight and back. So for the larger areas, we have this large light. Okay, it will have a piece of wood holding it, so it will go straight and back. That's it. All right. So here I'm going to use a battery light because. I don't really care about curing. So basically this is dry, okay? So it's dry, cured. That's the way you actually applicate the oil. So now a second coat, you don't need to go with the red pad to applicate because it's not rough anymore. You could just use a white pad and you could put very little bit oil. Just a very little bit, 50% less oil. And you go ahead and burnish it the same way. And you're going to see those little fine lines, very, very fine lines. See? Again, on the side, I will put an orec. Some people are doing a table. They can go with the grain direction to do that. You know, get the rid of that. You could do that. But I need, I need... If I put very little bit of oil, I need either to wipe the pad to straight up the grain direction or use a new pad. So now basically it's nice and clean. And I hit the light. One, two, 
one, two. On the job site, you hold the light and angle, that the big light, so you feather it, basically. So instead of going like this, sometimes you're putting a straight line, you might put a line right over there. But if you're holding the light and angle, you're feathering it, you're not putting any lines on it. So if this was a large area, I will come and do this. Come and do the same way back up, same way that. I will do that. See, both way I'm feathering it so I don't get a marks. But All right. Even if you get the line, explain that you can put another easy, easy, you can easy fix it. Yeah. Uh, God forbid if it happens. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. If let's say you do get a stop line, you could take the clear oil and just rub it on and feather it zero. That stop line will come out. That's what Bartan was bringing that point up. So basically, that's the way. You applicate the clear oil, color oil, or where it is really nice and smooth. It's hundred uh, percent. This is sealed. Some people they want to put a lot more coats. You can do that, but then then it's gonna start look like a poly. But that's the look you want. You can do that. Okay. So uh, any questions later on? More free to ask. Uh, but right now, this is just to know how to applicate the. The, the clear oil or color oil. Uh, anything you want to add on this, Bartan? No, no, you didn't go. So we're good with this. Yeah. So let's let's move on to fun part now, right? So let's put this clear back. I have I have uh, our, you know, the master over here, Abel, helping us to. Maybe that between port sending we fix what what about the week. Uh, you want to talk about that? Um, yeah, Vartan brought a point. Let me just get that yeah, piece of wood. Let right. me just show a couple more things. Basically, yeah, we, we, I'm just going to roll back even further back than applicating the oil. First of all, you sand the wood floors, 90% of oxidative oils or any burnishing oils, you want to stop 120 grit, right? You don't want to go more because if you go more, then you're not having the scratches. You're not going to get enough oil to protect. Remember, this is not a poly. Poly, you could go 150, 200 because you're putting a uh, top coat. This one we're absorbing into the wood. Even more than that, if I want a more vibrant colors, I want the colors to get more in there, or I want to, I want to protect the wood more, I will do a water pop. So if you do a water pop, you, you wash it with the water, and you let it uh, dry, grains, they will get swollen, it will stand up. You need to knock those grains uh, with the red pad first. Basically, when you burnish it with the red pad, you will break all those little filaments, you know, the, the grains that will come out, you vacuum it, and then you will have something like this. So this is and it's almost going to feel like wire brush, but it's not because those little fibers that just came out and it will absorb a lot more color. That's good, you know? So basically yep. you got to prepare the wood proper for using any colors. You know, you don't want to go fine numbers and you don't want to stay 80, 100 because then you will have a circular scratches and the color will absorb those scratches that way. Okay, so now we go into our color set that we've been, we're gonna be using it. So this is a color set, you know, from LED coating solutions. What is LED coating solutions? Uh, my background is floors and, 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 uh, and also finishing panels, cabinet doors, and um, this kind of wood surfaces. So we created this company, LED coating solutions, because I am going to be using most of the time LED cure products, which they cure immediately. And then it gives you the chance to finish the project, but also doing layer colors. That's really help us. But with LED coating, so we bring everything together, the equipment, right equipment, right sanders, uh, lights, finishing line, factory line, industrial lines, and also the products. So at this time present, we're using two products. We're using Heidelberg coating from Germany and Vesting from Holland. These are two products we're using it. But please keep in mind that those products are a little different 
in Europe. Okay, if you get the same color, let's say for chocolate, it will be much more diluted. Okay, so we took these colors. Now, when you see my color set, you're gonna see ultra name, ultra chocolate, ultra green, ultra uh, sap, uh, sepia, you know, ultra black, ultra white. Every time it says ultra, we maximize the pigment, which is very expensive. But what it does enables you to dilute as much as you want to get all different color tones. So that's why we use the ultra name. And we also change some things for viscosity to make it different viscosity than standard oils for uh, being able to use its dispensers and also for factory lines. So these colors don't mix it. If you get anything in Europe, it's not gonna be the same. And also VOC lows and everything, we stay with that with, with uh, US. Now, so in here, we have, this is altogether 24 pieces, but we have 21 colors. So what we did, uh, we put the name and the, I mean, I did this myself and I put the name on top so I could easily see it. Uh, we have some browns, we have some grays, you know, and we have some uh, deeper brown, like red, mahogany, cherry. And uh, basically we've got three main browns, right? Chocolate brown, you want to pull them out? We have sepia brown, chocolate Brown, English brown. Mm -hmm. We have, I don't know, mahogany could also be considered as a reddish brown. brown. Yeah. And that's it. Uh, and how about the charcoal? There was one color that. We have charcoal, which is very dark, but very nice color. What is this? Almost black. clay. Clay we have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, and then we have the grays, right? Uh, and then we have different whites, like they diluted. We have diluted like uh, invisible color, invisible uh, or a little bit of white um, pigmented or beige pigmented, you know, to get to the kind of uh, lime finish colors. Um, uh, talk to you louder if you want. The last thing what you said, lime finish colors. Lime finish yeah. colors like French finishes, like a uh, uh, water uh, white wash type of colors. But all these colors, it's been mixed from red, yellow, blue, and white and black to get this color. Basically, what I want, what I'm trying to say, how they arrive here like this, because they're ready for you to use. So what I did, I got these twenty one colors. Basically, what I did, I take them. And I put them on, on a piece of wood and I can have something like this. Like you see all the colors we have it here. It's very easy for you to start using something like this to, when you're gonna match a color, you have your start point. You can take this next to your piece of wood. You say, oh, I have this gray. Can you show now what we have already done? Yeah. But, after you have to have this gray. So basically I will take this gray next to, I'm gonna show you later on, as of today, we are matching one color. So I will put next to that gray and then I said, okay, this needs a little bit more red, a little bit more brown. Then I'll make a choice that should I use my browns and reds or we have red, yellow, blue oils separate, which really helps us to change everything we can. Because if you took that, uh, you saw the video about co color theory. You know, it's very intricate over there, shows how the colors, they work together. Um, basically, that's about it. So now, um, another thing I want you to know. So if you have all these browns, I'm going to show you something. How today grays are very, very popular and also Invisibles are very popular. People, they want it to see almost no change on a piece of wood. It doesn't look amber. So how to do that? I'm going to show you with my colors. And also, I want you to know what's a gray. So I have a gray, beautiful gray in my hand.
basically a lot of people will say gray is black and white, right? If you do black and white, you're gonna get very bluish gray, right? Gray, actually, once you have your browns, you know, once you have your browns, as soon as you add in the color uh, theory, when we add white, we call tint. As soon as you add tint, white in it, the brown will turn gray. So now if I have reddish brown, bluish brown, greenish brown, if I put the white inside, you will have bluish gray, whitish gray, greenish gray. So you will have every brown you can make easily gray by putting it white. But then you could take it away from that bluish by adding red in it. So you can play with that, okay? So now, Vartan, you want to add? I mean, basically, Vartan is a true artist, and uh, and he's been quiet right now doing all the talking. <laughs> I'm doing but, good, but I will bring it to the point that he will demonstrate and he will show it more details. You want to talk anything talking about, about the grace when um, the brown brown is good good choice to mix with white, so you will be safe from going towards bluish or greenish because you you know. Sometimes, no, very often you want to see like warm gray color, people like that. So that warmness you could get only from mixing white and different browns. I give a good example, yeah. Martin, like the, the tree trunk, right? If you really break it a little bit inside, you're going to see it's, it's a nice brown, mm -hmm. it's a warm brown. But because of those white you know, white oxidation on top, you get that whitish on top, it starts getting a warm gray. So basically okay, so that's a good uh, example. So the brown putting white over it even, doing ceruste, even with that, you could get a beautiful gray. So, I mean, it's so much to really, if you could take one color, we could talk one hour about it, but we want to Use, utilize this time to show overall. And then we have a lot of uh, live, hands-on classes you can, can join up and you can learn even more much more that time but while we have these browns when we talked about it we should get a white and show right uh, how this works maybe we could get that and uh, Abel, Abel will bring it you know and uh, that, I'm going to leave this box back there for now and uh, let's talk about this and then we'll go back on Just here. Okay. So what I'm prepared a little bit here, red, yellow, blue, and we got some clear oil, ultra matte, and and satin. We also have white and black. Yeah, white and black. I can put this so, on the for now. And why don't you, Uvartan, oh, show towel, please. take take like a brown, one of the browns. I wanna first I wanna show how, how black turns to bluish when you just mix it. Yeah, but make sure that they can see it from there. Okay, I took black, just black, and I'm mixing now with I have white next to it. Now we just simply mix it. Remember this, this, this is not a pigment. They are uh, all of them ultra colors. So basically once you're putting them, they are already adjusted with the clear in it. So you can easily go ahead and uh, make a color out of it. Our black had a little bit brown in it, so it's gonna come up less. Even uh, yes, but even you you on the oil you see it's like a nice uh, uh, gray color because the wood has its yellow uh, yellow body. Once you put it, see it looks like kind of bluish color. So that when you do black and white but every black is different so in our black that it's a little bit warmer so it doesn't go that much blue but he just showed that what happens with the when you do black and white but now he got brown now i'm just taking 
English brown from our palette. English brown have? is the most neutral brown. It's not going too much red and it's not going too much yellow or green. Uh, so it's kind of a neutral brown. Make sure that when you're doing it, we move this so I can see. Okay, I, instead of black, I want to use now English brown and you will see a much, to me, much prettier brown. A bit darker. You can put a little bit more black in it. Yeah. So. I want to give me a piece of paper. Let's put it on, then I'm going to hide it. Make it straight line. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you see, uh, you could see now type of type of brown you're getting. You're getting much warmer brown, and I have a, I mean, w warmer gray. So it is gray, but it's very warm gray. I can adjust that warmness, make it more colder by adding a little bit more black to it. Yep. Okay. You gotta be careful, don't move it towards. Yeah, blue. so, but see, it doesn't have any blue at all. It's a beautiful gray, warm gray, like almost a tree trunk. Now, when I go back, I open up the, the black gray, you can see how much blue it got in, right? It's yeah. a lot more bluish. So basic, basically every brown you get, you can adjust by putting it white as a tint to see what kind of gray you're getting. So it's already made for you if you want to go to make a gray. Do you have or now we have sepia brown? Uh, let's let's do sepia brown for a minute. So sepia brown is more greenish brown, right? So if I take sepia brown and I put a tint of white. Let me have more sticks. Yeah, I got it. I want to leave it in, so take it out. Okay. Make it normal size so we can see it back then. Right? Just put a little bit more white right in, right on that, yeah. Okay. And we gotta do this very really quick because we have so many things to go through. Mm -hmm. So remember I said sepia brown is more greenish, greenish brown. So when I put the white tint in it, look at how green, how green it's got. Right? But when you're looking at separate, it looks green gray. Right? Right there, it's a green gray. If I if I put a little bit of the uh, English in it, I can break that greenness a little bit, you see. So you really gotta understand the color theory with the with the colors that I highly suggest take a look at that video. So you know already which way to go, but then this color set gonna be a perfect set for you because you already have different browns, a lot of different browns by adding the white, you're getting that tint in there and you're getting all these grays. And I'm not even talking about you know, the brown itself. So 
while we're doing these two browns, Vartan, why don't you put the English brown a little bit here? And by having a red, yellow, blue, we can tweak that. This is English brown. Yeah, let's just get a little bit here. Let's do a little quick because we're not going to have the time. So I'm going to just put the English brown quickly. I applicate with the red and I kind of clean it with white. So as you see how nice, how nice this English brown is, right? But it's still, I, it's still, I think it's too warm, right? So before I do anything, I can cool this down because I have the blue or I can cool it down. Let's say you said, oh my God, this is too warm. What I do when I'm gonna do my clear coat, I can do layers with the clear coat by bringing it cooler, right? You wanna do that, Vartan? Yes, we so have two options here to dry that. I'm gonna dry this. Uh, even though it's a small light, but I always suggest to- Always remember put, about the safety. You don't wanna shine that light on your eye. Okay, so here we go, I cured it. Now, my second coat, my clear, if I just put clear, it will stay like that, but I can cool this down, I can get it more yellow. Let's say you were matching an uh, antique piece of uh, Jacobin color or something, but it's already got yellowed over the time. So when I put this on, this looks too vibrant. I can go ahead and do a few things. Go ahead. Yeah, to go more simple, we will, uh, what we want to do, let's say we consider this too, too red or too warm, and we want to cool it down a little bit. So from, from our color theory, uh, so how we could kill the red with opposite, I have the color theory, the so. opposite color. What's opposite color? And you see here, opposite color is yellow. Here, this is blue, blue. Okay, should so yeah, for a yellow. red, yeah. for for a red, your opposite color is green. Oh yes, yes, I'm yeah. sorry. So we are going red. Red opposite color is green. Mm -hmm. So I have to create quickly a green. But green how much sense? green? You know how yeah. how uh, if I go too green. It might take me to the yellow. If I wanted a cooler, I would go turquoise, like between the yellow and, and green. But if I wanted really old antique, I would go totally green, you know? So right now it's creating that. So. So I have Green, then I figure out, I, I will figure out how much, what kind of green I need. I gotta just do some tests and see. I do. Clear that a little bit. I will do it a little bit, right? But your red is not strong, so you, you don't. You, you exaggerate first, and then you clean it. Okay, let's cover the half. Yeah. Clean these edges so we don't see any green. Okay. So let's dry it. Huh? Yeah, so before I dry it even, yeah, let's dry it. Dry it. Okay. So remember, we are associating that's an old floor. It's got already a patina from yellowing and, and greening. And when I put my 
color English is too vibrant, and I want it to kill. Even English doesn't have too much red, right? The chocolate got a lot of red, but still depends close to what color. So if you look at it now, look at how red the the you know English turned. But by adding that green in there, see by itself it doesn't look green, right? But when you next to this, it looks so green. But by adding that green and what type of green he said how much yellow how much blue if i were to make it more bluish green this would have looked like more modern color it will it will come up like more sharper brown instead of antique brown so that's something for you let's say as i said if you have all my colors already made so you can bring the browns and next to your floor see which brown you have and from there, you could start adjusting the color. Uh, I want to I wanna say something that we, like I had the gray earlier I show you. You know, yesterday we received a project that to match a color. Uh, I will not give names of the product, but uh, so what we did, we went to our colors and uh, you wanna, it, yes. do you want to bring them? Yes. So we went to our colors and basically I'll show you what we did and uh, Vartan will explain what he did. And actually I have right now made this color from my color. So I, I went to my color chart. I have downstairs, same way, all the colors. Yeah. So we had a request for this color. This is not ours, it's just a request. Yeah, from somewhere else, and we had a request to match this color. We went right away to our color chart. We have more than 90 colors. But 21 mm -hmm. dominant colors, those are the ones. Right. You have it, like I explained right. how you can do it. So this one, we found it the closest. Okay, what, what is this, first of all? This is, can you read the name? This is this is actually Greece Belch, not from that. Okay, but uh, we're still. Yeah, so it's a, still it's a colors we we made it already in a wall. We have it. So I have water pop and non water pop. So you have more concentrated and non concentrated. So we put that color. It came kind of close to it, but if you see, I'm still seeing through the red of the wood and. So we took that color. You have the color or not? Yeah. And tweak it a little bit. Oh, you mean that the oil? It's okay. It's okay, Basta. Tweak it a little bit and we can match closer to this. You know, I don't know because this is could be, you know, the organic color. It will look different under the CRI and this will look different on a camera, but we can put it close by not really putting too much effort. Okay. Just, just an example that it just happened yesterday. Again, it helps if you put all these colors on a piece of wood. You can also do your own thing. You can mix them together to create, like we created other colors. So it's a really, really a help to start with. But for you to understand with red, yellow, blue, you can mix it on any of these browns to take them away and, and change it. That's one uh one way. What's a difficult color to make? Uh, I think for me, when you have these colors, it's easy because what's color doing? It's hiding the wood under it and making the color, you know, your color on top and, and you, you could see the wood extra color over it and it's changed the color. But what's really difficult when a wood got clear coat on it, so when a wood got clear coat on it, it's extremely difficult because you don't have the comfort of putting a colors over it. And that happens a lot, right? Yeah, they have a clear coat after 15 years or five years, 10 years, the patinas goes on, the, the finish itself gets oxidation, gets more yellowish, and a wood under it starts growing oxidation, it gets orange, but it's pure. Doesn't have the soft grain, hard grains, configuration different so that's a tough color to make right and that color we're going to have a seminar next month that's showing on site like we're going to do it but uh, 
Same thing, but I'll tell you what's the trick of that. That's that's where I have a fume color right there, okay, which represents something like that. So basically, this is you know one of the leftover my projects. It's hand scraped, reclaimed, antique look. And I got this color by doing fumigation, right? So when you do fumigation, uh, everybody knows that's an ammonia gas through it goes. You could see the soft grains and hard grains are so close to each other because they, you don't have the stain absorbed into those softer grains, double it up. And to do a color, try to match that, good luck. That's gonna be really tough. But someone like Vartan could match it. But there is a really a technique there that will help you to do that. You want to talk about this today or we'll do for the for the next class? 20 minutes or 18 minutes. Okay. If we have time, we'll come back to this one. That's a very difficult color to do. And otherwise, matching colors over color, we have very simple technique here which shows it. Uh, let, let's touch everything and then we'll come back to this. Now, what's the next? Yes. We had a question come in that I think is actually worth asking now. Um, sure. When you're mixing color on a job, would you use to measure the color so you know how to replicate the same color in a bigger quantity? But of course, very good question. that's a very good question. And uh, uh, I like to use a scale because when I use a scale, scale will never, you know, fake you. But the simple way to do it, you can do quantity. Like, let's say right now, first <laughs> what I'll do, if I'm matching a, just a piece to do repair, that's different. But if I'm matching to do 10,000, 5,000, or 1,000 square foot, different. What I will do, let's say, if I have my color set, I will either use a small spoon or I will use a gram meter and, and I will take, let's say, one part chocolate brown or English brown, and then how much white I need, and I will put one part white. Now it got too much. So I say, oh, you know what? The white is too much. So I put three parts brown, and I will leave that one part white until I get that. So now I know one part to three part. That could come close enough, but in our factories, uh, to making a real colors, that you want exact, you can take a gram meter and, and use a gram meter by dripping it in, but make sure when you use a gram meter, what I suggest people, they take it. Okay, let's say if I put this in a gram meter clear and I put a little bit of brown in it, like, and I see five gram brown in, in, a, in a one ounce or four ounce. So I, I will do my math later. So in four ounce, I have five grams of a, uh, you, you know, the white or black. First of all, I will get an empty can of this, zero it. I will not go with the ounce now. I will go by, by gram. So I will zero this and put it on. And then I put my, you know, 20 gram, 100 gram, 50 gram, whatever the clear I have. But the trick is this here, when you do this, make sure you zero the piece of stick you put inside or a spoon and make sure you zero it with the can and also when you keep trying it okay you 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 taking amount out and you keep putting a pigment be careful with that this is the problems i had so you don't change the formula okay so be very careful so that, that that's why i saw interrupting you that's why when you even on a job site when you mixing a uh, color to for testing you don't mix like a couple of spoons you take bigger amount and i would always go with the scale and and just scale it weight it as how, how much of how many grams of each color you're mixing write it down and then you will get your uh, formula perfect and will never go wrong yeah this was a very important question if someone watching this kind of uh you know the webinar or live demo, live demo. you in that level that you really want to get into this. So we highly suggest, we'll give you the link for the scales. You need double digit scale, not single, because when you're doing a small amount, you know, 0. 0.00. So this way, because you're doing a small grams, 
you know exactly what the color gonna go to. It's a the fast you could do by parts, you know, three spoon this and one spoon that. You mix it, you get close color, that's fine. But if you wanna do seriously, have your formulas, that's the way you will do it. That was a great question. And when we do another color class, real hands-on, it takes three to five days. If you guys take it, you'll learn everything. But first you should just take a regular LED class, how to apply the, the you know the product, how to work with it. Then you could take the color theory class with us. You will learn more. Today, I'm just showing you how you take, when you buy this set, what to do. So when you buy this set in future where we want to add this, and then maybe we'll have some links inside that you could go watch previous videos, learn a little bit more about this. This is very important. Then this will come out a little game. It will not be any issue to do the colors. So uh, that, that was a great question. Let's move on next. Maybe to work on a sap or the walnut? Yeah, let me have a piece of walnut. Uh, again, this will be another uh, the, the question a lot of people will have. When it comes to walnut, to grade walnut, it will not clear grade, select grade. They're going to have some of them a lot of sap, and they say that, oh, that's that's the way that's the way it comes. So you don't want to go ahead and start cutting them. But if you want to go clear, clear grade, it's going to cost a lot of money. Again, this is going to be a difficult task. Some people, they want to keep the walnut color the way it is. Some people don't. Some people, they think it's too pinkish. So when you put a coat, you can put a little bit color you want, like a little green or a little blue, kill that pinkish, or put a nice brown over it and have a dark, a lot of people, they say black walnut. In reality, it's not black walnut. The walnut got its own color under it again, the, the pinkish steel. But by using these stains, they call names. One difficult task will be if I'm going to put this clear and what happens to my sap? How can I get rid of the sap? There's two ways to do it. One, I will put my clear coat, cure it. Remember, the uh, LED product is two-step product, two coats. Even if you're going to do it clear, do two clear coats. You want to do color, you do one color, one clear. You want to go three times color for a reason, but still I want you to put a clear so you can have kind of like a poly protection layer not to touch the color coat under it, okay? So if I'm going to do this clear coat, this is going to stay. I will show you how I can get rid of this. And remember, if you have a multiple planks, maybe you could put a plank next to it so you could see how easy to touch up, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah. but we'll get to that point after you put the clear coat. So, uh, right, I'm gonna put a clear coat, maybe a half of it. Uh, have to rush a little bit. You have to rush, yes. I know, we don't have the whole time. Yeah, small, small one. Give me, okay. Okay, we we want to wet the walnut to see the the exact color what walnut comes. Walnut color comes after it, it's uh, sealed, not the raw. Yeah, because once walnut gets wet, before I continue, uh, can you see that? Look, when it's wet, it's already a little brownish. When it's that wet, it's really, really white. If I try to make a color adjustment now, that would be wrong because I don't know how much the color gonna change. And also I will have a problem with bleeding through the colors from there. So that's why Varta wanna wet it first to see actual color first. Go ahead. I like that. Okay, so we just we just burnished it like the way you will burnish it totally and got the little lines still, so I know I have enough. Because if I would put less oil, I would not know the color. I want to really put enough oil to see the color. So this is the color and that sap wood is always going to show it. Now, I could have dried this. Maybe 
I will have a small piece I could show two ways. Or maybe I could dry this and think I'm very happy and I did a tabletop or I did a floor and I called a client, I put another clear coat. It looks great to get paid. And a client, the sample you gave that had no sap or had very small sap, now you have too many saps, you're not going to get paid, but you're done with your job. You already put the finish on and it, you already cured it and you took your equipment already to your shop. So you're back there to get your check. You're not going to get your check because these saps, it's going to be annoying. But when you put it on, it's still wet. Remember, this product doesn't dry until you hit the light. You can walk around on it while it's wet. I can color this. That's that's your first choice, right, Vartan? Yes. I'm going to show you the first choice, and then I'll clean it, then I'll cure it, then I'll show you second choice. If you have enough time. So then <laughs> then do the second choice, because second choice is more okay. people get into it. So what I'll do, I will uh, raise the white pad. The red, yeah, the white pad's wet already. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. So it's the same clear oil. I'm going to wipe it with this. You can even start with the chocolate brown too. So it's one of our colors. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Chocolate and also English. So chocolate. you could see the walnut is a little reddish. Okay, and I put the oil everywhere. Now I'm going to dry this. And I see the sap. So if I'm, I'm, if I'm going to get rid of the saps, of course, you put the second coat, you could go back to it. It's going to be a little bit more difficult because you're going to play with the shin. It doesn't matter, but what I'm doing here before, before even I put my second coat is a perfect time. Fix those saps. This, this will never bleed. If I have a seam over here, I can put a tape on a seam if I want to, because this is right on the edge and I can feather that way. So I can get the rid of that sap. But Vartan did it took what color? Chocolate? Yeah, looking at the color of the walnuts, the walnut also comes different red colors, but right this particular one, we have chocolate brown, which is kind of matching to this color. But uh see, by the way, guys, we didn't try this today. We we just just doing it free, okay? Like just going on. So yeah, it's if I if I add a little bit of white to it. I might get better result, right? Okay. All right. So I already found out found out that the cho chocolate brown with white. Most of walnut sap yeah. could work. But sometimes you might need the extra adjustment. You see, he's not using any any uh what do you call it? Uh, tape. Tape the other side. It's because just, my, my walnut is sealed already and I don't have a fear of, you know, having overlapping or anything. Yeah, That's it, I think. So how do you like it? Ali? I think for me, it's a little bit, a little bit too red, you know. No, remember, we got it dry, dry yeah. right? When we dry it, when you're going to put clear coat, it's going to add yellow. See, Vartan just said something very important. Uh, I'm not. I'm not finished with this. I can cure it. I can touch it up again and again and again. So I, it's not end of it. But as an initial, initial coat, it looks much better than this, right? Right. This this looks totally different. But look at how easy effort was this. You just go there and touch it up, and take the light and cure it. Okay, cure it. Even the sheen is fine now. Yeah. Even... So if you look at those grains inside, it's kind of matching there. I can ad adjust this as much as I want now. Again, let's let's just show like if you want to adjust it. Just to 
more green or what? Uh, more brown? A little bit more brown, I can, but, but this is perfect. But I just want to show you, you can adjust it if you want. In reality, you don't. But then I could go my clear coat over it. You want me to make it look worse, I can do it. <laughs> Not to make it worse, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it, it's like, you know, I, I don't want to. It, it looks good, but I can go a little bit of the, can you give me a little English brown? Just English brown. Just a little. Just put it right here. Yeah. So, you know, Vakan had a point. You want to go worse, I can do worse to say. Yeah. A little bit more English. Okay. So basically, I don't want you to ruin my job. That's why I'm going to do half of it. So it's not <laughs> ruining your job. You know, but what I'm trying to say, if I want to take that red out a little bit. I can do that, right? Okay. okay. It's a little bit different. Yeah, but yeah. you can always adjust. It. Yeah, you can. After I put it, see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm adjusting it, you know? I don't want to be, I'm not stuck with this. I have two minutes. Can we stay longer or we? We don't know. See, I feather, I wiped it. I adjust the color less, less red. Right, you can do that as much as you want. Now, as I put the clear coat, you know, I have two different colors, of course, over here. Everything Kendra. comes. Kendra is waiting over there. I know. Just finish this spot quickly. I have the clear mm -hmm. coat. Let's see which one looks better, Vartan or mine. Doing a competition now. <laughs> it's always a competition, right? Okay. That's that's how we grow. This part is my touch up and top, and this is Vartan's. So you guys say which one is better. But but what I'm trying to say, it's so easy to work, and nobody will know you did something there. But also there was a little tricks that see, I didn't put it straight. The, the dark color on the sap because softer part of the sap it will suck more and it will give you that zebra look over there. So that's why we didn't want to do that. I kind of conditioned it clear and then I went, okay? So that's something that's a beautiful. I don't know how the camera looks. Here it looks good. Usually camera changes things. It looks great and very even from my end. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for walking through all of that. I just wanted to make sure we have enough time because we did get a few questions that came in. Um, before I get to them, I want to just mention that you referenced links a few different times, and we will be sure to add those links before we send out an email to everyone that registered. So um, if you registered for this live demo, keep an eye out. You'll be getting an email tomorrow. Um, that will have a link to the full recording as well as the links referenced. And then um, the video recording will also live in our live demo library on the website. Um, so you can reference it there anytime as well. That, so, sounds, great. that sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, with that, we will get to the first question from Corey. Where can we buy the colors you're using, specifically white, black, red, yellow, and blue? Everything you get from leddecodingsolutions.com. Again, when we send you the link, our website will be there. Uh, we have it in a website, right? Uh, white, white, the red, yellow, blue. See, see the white, black, it is in the set. Red, yellow, blue is a separate. That's for the pros to make colors. So you can buy the red, yellow, blue separate, and then you have everything. We didn't want to put red, yellow, blue in a in a in a pack because people who doesn't know they will not be able to do anything with them. But, but on a website, they could put the request, name it, and we know what they want. Yeah, they can buy that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, perfect. Do you want to show the kit again quickly, just so they know what they're getting in the kit? Yeah. 
Uh, some of the stuff is out from the kit right now, but this is the whole kit. Basically, it, you have all the colors here. So, uh, and we, we have the flyer. I think we have the flyer next to this. Also, we have 12 up. colors and, and six color kits. Yeah, so this is full color. This is full colors, but I suggest it's not expensive investment. Even this is not enough for me. So if you take this, mix these colors to do it on a piece of wood. So you have, if you do 50% 50, 50, 50 of this, what you will get. So you have reference colors in your hand. So you could easily go to that and say, oh, this looks like this. I can match this. But this set alone, it's enough for you to get you a direction. We also, in the kit, you will have a uh, piece of flyer, which will have just the colors on it. In, in a few minutes, I'll show you that once they bring it. So you could also have that as a reference for you to show to the customer and this, this is the color. But I suggest to do something like that. So you could have a piece of wood in your hand. Like, this is what I meant. See, I just took it and I put the, the gray over there and I made a special gray with it. Okay. okay, perfect. So there's two different kits available. And then if people have special requests, they can email you through the website, correct? Yeah. And, and, the, and you will have this kind of flyer in there. You know, it talks about the lights. And also it's the same 21 colors there. We did a photography as close as we can. I mean, it, it, it's photography always shows a little different, you know. Uh, let's see how much time we have after the question because I was going to do one more demo, but uh, it's okay. If it's not, we will do it next time. Go ahead. Okay, I will get to the next question from Michael. Two questions. Number one, what is the smell of the product? For me, it smells beautiful. <laughs> very, very, very mild and like a par perfume. <laughs> yeah, so basically Heidelberg got a smell of a, uh, you know, the kids clothing detergent kind of smell, which I think they added that. Without that, it is no smell. The best thing that does not have any smell, it's just like maybe concentrated colors. The pigment might have a paint smell. Otherwise, mm -hmm. there is really no smell. The, the way I suggest to do the project, if you're doing a large floors, always have the ventilation. So this way, when you're curing it, that's the time the reaction takes place. But after the reaction, there is no more reaction going. It's cured. And it's VOC-free product. And it's a VOC zero product, yes. Okay. And his second, the second part of his question, what is the maintenance? Okay. So for the maintenance, yeah, let, let me have the liquid. Uh, Westing got a, a soap that calls a, uh, uh, you know, the intensive cleaner. I don't like to use soaps. They have residues, like some of the soaps, they have waxes and some of the soaps, they have a uh, fats kind of to protect more, but that's changing your sheens and, and makes it more bluey. So intensive cleaner, if you're doing a white floors and you know after a while the dirt goes into the soft grains, you can clean it. But if the if the floors are starts wearing, you could always go move the furniture one side, kind of touch up all those areas, like the way I touched up the sap, if there is a wear from the chairs or something, then maroon pad it and put a whole clear coat over it again. Oh well, main maintenance oil too. Oh, we have a maintenance oil, it's oxidative. I don't like to do oxidative. I want to do that whole idea of it, put it on and out. Yes, we put a clear spot over it. Or oh, the black spot removed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One of other maintenance things, can I have a piece of wood from there? Right. Oh, no. yep. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes, what, what I did here, I, this is a iron acetate. So basically when a vinegar and hits the metal together, this is what you get. Or so, water. Or, or water. So this is happens a lot of floors. They get, they get the, uh, you know, or, or if you do a bleach and then you wash it with the vinegar, this is the things you could get. Uh, with the vesting, we have lots of spot removal. 
for the maintenance. It's a good thing. So you could just put it on a little bit and uh, it just cleans it right off, you know. So so when you leave this on a couple of minutes, it will just take that black spot right off, you know. We start taking it off as you see. So as a maintenance product, we have that as well. Something really serious is going to help it for the maintenance. I will use it, but I don't want to use any residue cleaners. Perfect. Okay, uh, our last question is, can still can steel wool be used between coats to get more chatoyance or luster? <clears throat> yes, you can. Yes, you can, uh, because the steel wool basically shears it. It doesn't sand it, like scratch like a sand, it shears it. And But I will use between coats, like they said, not not to shear it, the fibers of the wood, then it will not absorb the oil. With Finkos, you can do it, of course. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much. This was really informative. And just a reminder to attendees that we will be sending out the recording via email, as well as all of the links referenced tomorrow. You can also go back and watch, LED has done a lot of past demos with us, and you can watch all of those in the WFB Live demo library on our website as well. Yeah, Kendra, maybe also we send all the attendees next two schools that we have, one with Lagler, we have from 11th to 15th, and then we have with NWFA advanced finishes. November 5th to 7th. 5th to 7th, November. November 5th. Seventh. Okay. Maybe Perfect. Yeah, we can yeah. include that information in the email as well. Because the Lagler, it's it's closed the school, but they can put it just in case any constellations they can get in there still. Perfect. Or closed, booked, booked. Yeah, <laughs> full. Okay, guys. Take care. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. Watching. Thank you for watching. Okay. Write any questions you have. We can answer it for you. Thank you. Thank you, Kendra. Bye bye. 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 Right.